Hi, my name's David and I'll be showing you how to successfully back up your complete iTunes library using CopyTrans TuneSwift. It's an incredibly simple process and you can back it up one of two ways. One way is by doing a full backup which backs up your entire iTunes library, or you can do an incremental backup which only backs up the latest changes that have occurred in your iTunes library. It's important to remember that you can't do an incremental backup without first doing a full backup. With that said, this is how you perform a full backup. We're first going to select the backup button in TuneSwift and then the full backup button. Now we're going to have to plug in either an external hard drive or a flash drive into our computer. Once it's plugged in, we're going to select the browse button and on the left hand side of this Windows Explorer window, we're going to select whether we have the flash drive plugged in or the external hard drive plugged in. In my case, I have a Toshiba external hard drive and so I have that selected and if you'd like you can also change the name of the iTunes backup file. Once you've done that, you can click the save button and then we can select start backup. Once you do that, you can see this new window which shows the progress. So as you can see, the backup has successfully finished, and if we browse to the drive where we told TuneSwift to backup iTunes, you can see that we have all of the archived files saved. Now the amount of archived files will be different for everyone because it's dependent upon the size of your iTunes library. If for instance your iTunes library is 9.5 gigabytes large, you'll have 10 archives because they're split into 1 gigabyte files. The reason this is done is so that you can have the ability to use a drive formatted to FAT32. Now we're going to learn how to do an incremental backup. Again, you can use this option to back up the latest changes that were made to iTunes. I've already deleted quite a few songs from iTunes which will allow us to back up these changes. The first step is to select the backup button and instead of selecting full backup, we're going to choose latest changes. Now we're going to have to browse and select the previous backup file. Now this is why we just did a full backup. So we're going to select the browse button and we're going to select the iTunes backup.tsw file that we just backed up. This should be located in your external hard drive or your flash drive that you backed it up to. Once we select it we can select open and then start backup. So you can see the progress here once again. The backup is now finished and if we browse to the drive where we told TuneSwift to save the backup to, you can see we have one extra file. This file isn't named like the other ones. Instead it's named itunesbackup.inc001.tsw. Another nice feature about backing up your iTunes library with TuneSwift is that you have the choice to disable the backup of your iPhone, iPod, or iPad backups that automatically get stored in iTunes when you sync them. To do this, simply go to the Settings tab and Advanced Settings. Now where it says general.backup.ios, instead of the value being yes, we're going to change it to no. Once you do that, just press enter and the next time you do your backup, TuneSwift will not back up your iPhone, iPod, or iPad backups. So that's how to successfully back up your iTunes library, both completely as well as incrementally. Thanks for watching.